I've got my apron, I've got my chef's knife, and I'm cooking up a review of the new foodie drama, A Taste of Hunger. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking about A Taste of Hunger, which is a new foodie drama starring Nikolai Kostrowaldu and Katrin Grice Rosenthal. It's already out. It came to digital and DVD on April 26, 2022. And my hot take is I think you should watch it. I liked it a lot. It's a film that blends good food, drama, and the constant push and pull of living your dreams and life's kind of responsibilities. I thought it had a really wonderful style. It was interesting without being like too Hollywood dramatic. I thought it was a really good film. It's a Danish film. So if you don't like reading subtitles. This might not be for you, but if you're interested in this at all, it's definitely something to watch. So I'm going to tell you a little more of the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like. Briefly touch on the ending. So if you don't want to know about the ending, you don't want to know what happens at the end of this film, and there's some surprises, so you might not want to, then I would turn it off at the ending portion. Until then, you can watch me prep this review. I'm going to cut up some facts, cut up some, some opinions, and boil it together into a nice review stew. That was a terrible analogy, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. So in A Taste of Hunger, you have kind of the star chef Karsten played by Costa Waldo and his, you know, wife slash she's kind of like the business partner and also seems to be kind of an inspiration for him. Maggie played by Grice Rosenthal and they together have opened this restaurant called Malthus, which is this kind of up and coming Danish restaurant in Copenhagen. It's trying to serve some very interesting food. Costa Waldo is, is always trying to kind of like serve the freshest local foods. He's always trying to make a signature dish. He has a lot of really interesting meal prep. I don't know how much of it is him versus how much of it was like, you know, hands that did it. But there are some very cool meals that are made in this film, some very delicious looking food. But they are they have been pursuing this dream for about 10 years of trying to get a Michelin star. That's been their, their goal for the entire time. And this film is kind of about them trying to run their restaurant when they think that they're getting evaluated. But then also some aspects of both their success and their past come together in this time to add some drama, add some layers and some different flavors and spices to this overall movie stew. So the first thing I liked about this film is the style. It has this dark overall tone that deals with a lot of like earth colors, a lot of darker themes and darker colors. It's not, you know, too dark by any means, but like, let's say that the chefs all wear like black aprons and the restaurant Malthus has a, a darker kind of trendy feel to it. There's not a ton of lighting. There's this big table in the middle that is lit in the middle, but everything else is a little bit darker around it. So it has this just really nice style that translates outside of it as well. A lot of the scenes do take place at night. Even the scenes that take place during the day seem to have kind of like an overcast feel to them. And the film does deal with some darker aspects of life, of success, of kind of responsibility and trying to be I don't know, perfect, I guess, versus trying to be there for your family. But overall, it has this really intriguing style. And there's also some interesting imagery, some darker imagery. There is a lot of kind of Adam and Eve first temptation type imagery. The apple plays like a key part in this film. It comes up a few times. And so I, overall, it just is a very interesting place to be. And it's something that really draws your attention, especially at the start, but then throughout, it kind of keeps your attention because it has this really kind of refreshing, interesting look to it. The second thing I loved, and this kind of relates to it, is the understated style. This has a darker tone and some, like I said, some dark subject matter, but it does it without being kind of too over the top. Even when this film gets tense, even when big things happen it doesn't feel like i don't know your hollywood type of film if you if this was like a hollywood film you think it'd be like a gordon ramsay type character who's just screaming in the kitchen throwing stuff you know there's fires everywhere this film has aspects of that where some of the chefs get frustrated and, and maybe some of the chefs do lose their temper but it never goes too over the top and this film does progress in a way that feels serious and kind of based in reality without being too over the top, which I really appreciate. It really kind of know, humanizes these characters, even though one is like a super chef and the other is a successful business person. Like they, they feel real, they feel interesting. And that leads me directly into the third thing I like, which is the characters. Everyone in the film is, is realized and has different layers. Like no one is one dimensional, kind of like a good recipe. You've got some different flavors that mix together to form these characters. So, so Carson, the chef is a wonderful chef. And then in the kitchen, he is this master. But then sometimes he takes that to his family life. And then he has to kind of balance his, like, I don't know, his, his persona where he is in control and able to kind of control everything with, with, you know, children who don't always listen and who kind of want to do things themselves. Even if it's not right, they still want to do it. And Maggie is kind of the business person. She's controlling the I don't know, finances and promotion of this restaurant, but she also has other desires. She has other interests as well. And she has some unrest, even though they are both striving for the same dream. 
the fourth thing I liked are the performances and all the performances are really good. There's no one that really feels too off in this movie, but I really liked Chloe, who is the, the daughter in this film. She has, she, she doesn't have a ton of scenes, but there are a few scenes where she did, I don't know, perfect kid acting. Like she acts and responds to things in a way that you would expect a kid to. And I really liked that. It didn't feel like she was acting. It didn't feel like she was too over the top. It felt very natural. There was one scene where she was describing something and kind of answering some questions from someone that, is is just a little bit obscured, a little bit obfuscated. And if you've ever tried to kind of interrogate a child, that is exactly how it is. You know, you kind of have to come to their level and, and sometimes they'll say something without actually saying it. And you have to kind of arrive at the answer that you know that they want, but they were not going to say it themselves. It was a very well done scene and things like that. Like a lot of the characters and a lot of the acting, the performances do feel very natural. And that just kind of lives, lets you live in this world and experience the story and the drama without being distracted. And the last thing I really liked is the ending. Now the ending, there, there's a lot that kind of boils up and there's, there's this big ending scene that, like I said, is dramatic, but not in your Hollywood way. It does feel, I don't know, maybe a little bit more realistic. Maybe it just feels, it feels right for the tone of this film, but you have something that kind of boils over in the towards the end of the film and then it slowly starts to resolve and you get a little bit more time with the characters and, and maybe as the as the stew cools some of the things coalesce into a an interesting ending meal that's a terrible analogy again but i'm gonna keep going with food stuff because it's all i got uh things i didn't like the first is there is a main dramatic issue in this film that is important but i felt like it kind of hit a little too quickly now they they hint at things throughout they they have a, have a really nice kind of build up uh, with this, these like chapters that kind of go into these characters' lives and, and how they got to this situation. And I really thought it was interesting because they had like a like a projected billboard type thing for uh, the chapter names. If you've ever played Splinter Cell Conviction, I think it is. Yeah, Splinter Cell Conviction. And they do the same thing where they, it's, it's almost like a film noir type movie where they'll like project a phrase on a wall and that's like the, the chapter name. And it looks really slick. It kind of fits with... This film isn't a noir film, but it has aspects of a noir style to it, and that fits perfectly with that. There is there, so there is some buildup to this big dramatic moment in the film, and it's kind of the main dramatic impasse that happens. But I did feel like it was a little bit too quick. I felt like they could have had maybe one or two more scenes that built up to it. I mean, the film is already fairly long; it's about an hour and forty minutes. So you know, I don't think it needed to have too much, but maybe one or two additional scenes to help push this forward and make it feel more natural like again it wasn't bad it's just I, th I thought it happened a little too quickly and the last thing i know i said i liked the ending the ending also does seem to resolve itself a little too perfectly now i, th I think the ending fits and i liked the ending i thought it was enjoyable but i do wish that there were again similar to the main dramatic issue i wish there were one or two more scenes that helped to kind of smooth over this shift because there was a pretty big shift that happens uh, at the end and I wish that there was like one or two scenes to kind of show some cracks before that shift happened. So now briefly going into the ending and kind of the, the story of this film, like I said, you've got the main plot of Carson and Maggie trying to make their restaurant Malthus into a Michelin star restaurant and they have been trying very hard. The problem with Michelin is you don't know when they're investigating, when they're going to evaluate the restaurant and then when they do you get one shot. So they're constantly trying to maintain perfection, trying to constantly be there and they're one night out when they can kind of be away from the restaurant in two years they think the michelin person's there so they hurry back they serve something but unfortunately one of their chefs didn't test uh one of the one of the elements of the food and their signature dish had over fermented lemons which i guess is bad i don't know i've never had fermented lemons but i guess that's bad so a lot of the film then revolves around them trying to track down the michelin person to give them another chance during this we also find out that someone sent Carson a note saying uh, your wife is in love with someone else and he kind of saw that he, I don't really know how he and he interpreted it. he just kind of like put it to the side I don't think I don't know if he thought much of it and he was very busy I think his like one of the things that Carson was going through is he was always constantly working trying to make the restaurant perfect so it might have been one of those things where he's like I don't have time for this and he just put it to the side now while Maggie's out looking for the Michelin person lean on her contacts we find out that she has actually been uh, having an affair with a former or the chef that used to work with them named Frederick. And we see how that developed. It was a very kind of abrupt development. It was something that happened because I think she was feeling disconnected to her husband. They, they started this restaurant. He, they were working all the time. He wasn't ever home. And when he was home, he wasn't really there. So she was feeling disconnected. If she and Frederick started having a relationship that became fairly serious, but eventually she cut it off. While she's looking for this Michelin person, 
we find out that Frederick might know where he is. And so Frederick essentially blackmails her to get the information. He forces Maggie to come over to his house, which you know is implied that they're going to have sex. And she does that just to get the information. It's, it's not an enjoyable experience, not a pleasant experience at all. It's, it's actually a very kind of abrupt, serious scene. But when he finally tells her the information, he says it actually wasn't the Michelin person. It was just some British foodie. And so that kind of like, A, this whole scene was painful because she had broken it off with him. She didn't, she didn't want to be in that relationship anymore. She wanted to kind of stay with her family, stay with her husband. So, but she did this for their overall dream, for their dream of having a Michelin restaurant. She thought that they had to kind of fix this incident with this Michelin uh, investigator. So it's a very painful scene to watch. It's a very tough scene to watch. She goes home and he, she's talking to Carson. He's like, oh, it was just a British foodie. You know, it was a false alarm. He was just kind of like, he knew what to do to pretend like he's the Michelin person to try to get special treatment. And so that's when Carson pulls out this note. Now the note that was sent to him, Maggie had seen that earlier. Uh, it kind of caused an issue, like it caused her to think immediately that Frederick sent it because that's the, you know, the person that you would think would send a note to him saying your wife is in love with someone else. He confronted her earlier. He was upset about it. Eventually he forced her to come over to his house, but she had had that note in his, in her pocket because like it, it caused her, it, like it caused her concern. When she comes back, Karsten had looked in her pocket for some cigarettes and found a note and like, I don't think he thought too much of it, but when it was in her jacket, he thought, okay, now something is going on. So he confronts her. She admits that she had an affair with Frederick. She doesn't actually explain much, which I thought was a little weird. Um, you know, she just kind of admits that it happened, that she had just been with him and that it was over. But, you know, I don't know how a reaction should be, but I would have thought that maybe she would have said some more about it was over a long time ago when he blackmailed me, things like that. She doesn't say any of that. They have a confrontation, not a violent confrontation, but Carson throws her out, you know, essentially saying some pretty, very hurtful things. He's feeling hurt. She's feeling hurt. He throws her out and then he kind of collapses and starts crying and, and their daughter, Chloe, sees this. Now, fast forward a little bit later, they're still working together because they still have Malthus and they found out that the Michelin person wasn't the Michelin person. So they still are kind of trying to make this restaurant dream a reality, but now they're more business partners. They're very cold to each other. They kind of are there for the cameras and for stories. But then after that, they're cordial, but cold. And eventually we find out that Chloe is not doing well in school ever since their separation. She has not had interest in school. She's not had interest in social interaction. She hasn't been doing her homework. She is not taking this well. So they take her to a specialist. And that specialist has this really wonderful conversation with her. This is the one that is like, I think this feels like how you would talk to a kid. Where, you know, she's like, is there something, you know, essentially she kind of pulls out of Chloe that there's something that she wants to tell her parents, but she doesn't want to say it because she's worried that they're going to get angry. And she doesn't want the psychologist to say it. Like she wants the parents to know what it was um and the, the, what it was is that she wrote that note she she was the one that wrote the note to her dad because she just wanted to end she saw that you know they were unhappy her dad was working her mom was you know unhappy in the relationship she wanted all that to end she wanted them to be happy again so she wrote the note to her dad so she thinks that she's the reason that her parents got separated and that's been kind of wearing on her this this child psychologist is able to pull that out of her but you know chloe doesn't want that wants her parents to know that information, but doesn't want to say it and doesn't want the child psychologist to say it. So you kind of get this little hint of what's happening. Now, we also find out that that night there is a, the Michelin Awards. They're going to award the, the stars for restaurants. And so there's a big gathering at Malthus, the restaurant. Everyone is there. You know, like Carson and Maggie are still trying to be good parents. So they are there with the kids uh it's it's still very cold maggie's kind of off to the side carson is watching with with all the chefs and whatnot and they go through the restaurants and for the copenhagen restaurants the one stars they list them off and mouth is not on there and you know one of the chefs that's in there it kind of complains to carson saying like they wanted you to be there you weren't there they're doing this as an insult and carson's like look i had to be here for my family like this is not an option and they're, they're kind of fighting they think that they lost their opportunity then you hear the michelin people say and now the two-star restaurants, and they start listing them off. And, you know, they list off some, and it seems to be an alphabetical order, so Malthus isn't on there. And then they say, and the new surprise entrant is Malthus. And everyone kind of bursts out into cheers. Everyone's happy. Everyone's excited. Like, this, this is far beyond their dreams. They just wanted one star. Now they're instantly two stars, which I imagine is a very difficult thing. I don't, maybe it doesn't even happen. Who knows? But Karsten gives a speech. And he gives, in this speech, he really kind of acknowledges 
that he could have done this without everyone, but specifically he could have done it without Maggie because Maggie, and I think she inspired him to try for this. She was kind of the driving force behind a lot of this. She helped him design the restaurant. She helped him uh, get the space and whatnot. And it's actually, it's a very sweet scene. I think he kind of recognizes how much they've been through together. And so you think, okay, maybe things will be better. And then Chloe starts to have like a seizure. She like falls on the floor. I can't tell if it's a real seizure because she's like overwhelmed or if she's like a fake seizure trying to get attention. It doesn't really matter uh, for the purposes of this film. Her parents both get around her and they're like, you know, is Chloe okay? And like she then says like, I wrote it. I wrote the note. And both of her parents kind of instantly, they, they understand what this means. And they, then they both say, you know, mom and dad are, he, are right here and we're not leaving you. And then Chloe apologizes and Maggie says, you know, but, but you've done nothing wrong. The only two that did something wrong were mom and dad. I think they realize, you know, this instance, one of the things that drew Maggie back into the family was a, an instance with her youngest son, August, where he kind of, she was distracted and he got lost in the forest. And then we were worried that he was, you know, in danger. And that kind of forced her to realize how much the family meant to her and how much she wanted to be there. I think this is a similar scene where seeing Chloe like this and seeing how much, how sad she was about what she, you know, perceived that she had done and also what happened to them really drew them together. Also the fact that they got two stars, the fact that they achieved their dreams, I think it really kind of drew them all together to see how important this was. So then after that, Karsten makes everyone food and he makes them these like fancy hot dogs similar to something that they made the first time that him and maggie met they kind of threw together these really fancy ingredients into this like hot dog that was like i don't know exactly what it was but like prosciutto with like fancy pickled vegetables and some sort of crunchy thing on top on like artisan bread it would be very good if you were an adult the kids don't like it so they go off and get street hot dogs and now everyone's happy uh, they're eating street hot dogs. This like two star Michelin chef is eating a street hot dog and enjoying it. It's a it's a kind of a nice ending scene with everyone together being happy, you know, enjoying their company and food. And that's the end. There is a stinger. Uh, in the stinger, you see Maggie go to a bar and Carson is there, and it looks like they're kind of on like a, a fun date. And he has a whiskey sour for her, which is the drink that has been like throughout their relationship. They both smile. They both look happy. You think that everything is going to be fine. So like I said, it's, it's kind of a nice, happy ending. I think it resolved a little too quickly. I wish that there would have been maybe one or two scenes in the buildup to that speech where maybe Maggie and Carson are, are being nicer to each other. They're very cold to each other until that moment. But like I said, it resolves in a nice way, leaves you with a good feeling, leaves you happy, leaves you fulfilled. So that is A Taste of Hunger. It's out on digital and DVD, April 26, 2022. So it's out right now. You can check it out from the comfort of your own home. Uh, I think it was a very interesting film. I really liked it. I think you should definitely check it out. Hey, maybe make it make it a dinner date. Go order some fancy food and watch this movie. It'll be perfect. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.